Welcome. We've got a big vote of confidence by a very big Tesla and NEO investor. And no, I'm not talking about myself and also not about Tencent, although this would also fit the description. But actually, I'm here talking about Bailey Gifford and their latest filings, which show that they have increased their stake in NEO dramatically. So in this video, I'm going to discuss it. Um, Who is Bailey Gifford? Why is this important? What does it tell us about NEO and a little bit also about Tesla and how um, Bailey Gifford is um, investing? So first of all, this is the filing or basically, no, this is just Fintel, a platform being used to um, show, for example, disclosures of equity positions. Um, in the past, there have been some issues on this platform that, uh, for example, shares have not been counted uh, correctly. And so I need to be a little bit con uh, cautious about this, um, but um, I've looked a little bit deeper here and it seems I'm able to verify that this is actual the share count um, that um, Bailey Gifford is reporting now here. So as you can see, this is the whole filing actually on the Edgar platform with the SEC. So this is kind of the, the raw document, if you will, that's going in there. And if you um, look for the NEO shares here, um, here you see a chunk of 83 million, uh, another 1.8 million, 3 million and 4 million um, and another 30 million. So you you end up, um, you know, getting to this um, disclosed um, number here of around, um, where is it, uh, 121 million um, shares owned by Bailey Gifford in NEO stock. And that is um yeah quite a um an increase here um because as you can see um in the la latest uh, quarterly filing um the so called 13f filing it was only about 96 million well only that's already a huge stake in the company so Bailey Gifford is one of the biggest investors in here of course um but now they have bought 24 million new shares actually um, during the last three months. So um, that's happened in quarter four of last year. It's only being reported now. And so this already gives us a sense of um, when they thought around um, increasing their position, when they thought basically, you know, um, that there is an opportunity there and the share price is considerably low. First of all, who's Bailey Gifford? Well, there are a um, big investor out there, um, the Scottish Mo Scottish Mortgage Fund, and um, they have a total asset uh, under management of um, valued around 254 billion US dollars. So to give you a sense, this is quite big. This is one of the largest fund managers out there. Um, comparing it, for example, to the well-known ARK Invest funds, which are at, which have an assets under management of around 14 billion, um, that's roughly 15 times the size. So it's quite a difference here. Um, the, the amount that uh, an, a manager like Bailey Gifford can invest, um, for example, to one of those smaller hedge funds, right? So this is significant. Um, they are one of the biggest um, position holders in NEO, as I mentioned before. They have been early in Tesla, by the way. They have been early in NEO. Um, and the latest filings regarding Tesla have shown um, that they have slightly reduced their shares only by a count of 1 million shares. Um, always need to be cautious here as well regarding po possible stock splits and stuff like happening. Uh, but it looks uh, to me that um, Bailey Gifford has actually um, yeah, slightly reduced their position here. And that is underscored, for example, um, by this except of an um, interview where they talk a little bit about their Tesla position. So we have been reducing our Tesla positions and sold some shares um, earlier in the year um, when the valuation in our view was very demanding. Um, so we took that opportunity to, to reduce Tesla holding and redeploy the investment elsewhere. More recently with a declining share price that have also taken the position down um, uh, as well. So it's both factors. And why do you still like the company? It's, it's a top 10 position. Mm. Why is it there? So we think that Tesla plays a very important role in helping to address climate change. Um, first, by electrifying transportation um, and enabling more people to drive electric vehicles. 
and the role they have played in a increasing the appeal of electric vehicles um, through engineering and also decreasing the price of electric vehicles through uh, s economies of scale and manufacturing efficiency um, that have um, opened up the opportunity for more people to, to drive electric vehicles and that has an environmental benefit. But on top of that, Tesla plays an important role in uh, energy storage and through um, battery, um, Tesla uh, Megapack are used increasingly by grid operators to balance the uh, fluctuating generation of wind and solar energy. Uh, so that um, plays an important role to allow more um, green energy to be uh, added onto the grid. So we think there are multiple areas in which Tesla can help uh, the society from an environmental perspective. At the same time, from an investment perspective, the penetration of electric vehicles is still low. It's um, single digits in most countries. We think that will increase over time as costs continue to come down and people becoming more conscious of climate change. Um, so we think the growth opportunity is strong. At the same time, the competitive advantage for Tesla is very strong as well. We think profitability coming through at an impressive level and we believe the company will generate um, very attractive profit growth over the long term. Now back to NEO, what is interesting here is uh, if we look at previous filings, so the 13G slash A seems to be some sort of the annual filing. Um, where we can see that in the past they have actually also reduced their ownership of NEO, so they have kind of traded around, have, have been taking some profits um, in the year 2022, um, actually reduced from 107 million shares to only 88. And now um, by the end of Q4 reporting those um, uh, 121 million. So that means they took some money off the table and now decided to come back in with a quite um, decent um, junk buying here only in the last couple of months. Now, why is this a vote of confidence and a big signal? Not only because of the price and the recency of these uh, purchases, but also because, of course, Bailey Gifford is the, the author of this um, new investment prospectus, which is um, quite dated by now, so we don't have an update to that. However, they clearly outlined their initial thoughts around why they have invested in the company and what kind of upside they're actually seeing. Um, so here, for example, why we own it, an emerging uniquely Chinese brand champion that aspires to completely reimagine the experience of car ownership and shape a community of joyful users with premium member services offered through Nia House and Neo Life. Um, notably here, Bailey Gifford is one of the few investors which sees Neo then more than an actual car company, but also considers the e-commerce aspects and the services of it. They see a vast market opportunity. China accounts for 60% of incremental EV sales globally with a huge pent-up demand, given the chances of citizens obtaining a license plate for non-EV in Beijing, uh, for example, and an inspiring founder who naturally thinks in long time frame and, invest, uh, and invests personally in his distinctive vision. That was reiterated by an interview by the Bailey Gifford um, founders and managers uh, a while ago. Have a look here. One of the important um, factors for us when Neo was going through some of its dark days um, was that William Lee was still there, was still engaged, was putting more of his own capital into the business to ensure it got through that period. And you know, broadening that out, um, you know, lots of people say they're long-term investors, um, but then when, when you look at their turnover statistics, it, it, it doesn't back up that claim. And um, why? It's, it's because if you are a long-term investor, things go wrong. And you know, forget trying to be clever and, and buying at the bottom of the dips, but simply enduring through those periods where things are going wrong can be extremely difficult. You know, there, there have been more than 10 occasions in our ownership of, of Tesla where the, the stock price has dipped over 30%. Um, and, and there's a pressure that comes with that. So it's what things do you look to, um, simply to s simply to endure the, the inevitable dark days that you're going to face. And you know, in the specifics of Neo, it, it came back quite strongly to William Lee, his commitment and his preparedness to put more capital into into what he was doing. 
Which is, is a great point, Tom, and it was very similar to what Elon did at the time of crisis in, in Tesla as well, wasn't it? And they see an attractive business model. There is a considerably spare capacity in the Chinese automotive industry and NIO is happy to outsource the manufacturer of its products to high quality partners while retaining control of the key intellectual property. So similar to my views here, they actually embrace the model of outsourcing um, manufacturing and see the business model innovation aspect of that. While, of course, there are many um, people out there criticizing this model. However, notably, as I mentioned again, uh, Bailey Gifford is not only invested in NIO, but also in Tesla and have been early in Tesla. And this is also one of my, um, yeah, really the, the bits that I love about Gilly, uh, Bailey Gifford is that they also say there are lazy analogies to Tesla. The visions are different and combined with fearfulness at the short term capital needs, there might be issues around Neo stock. And we truly see that in the market, you know, people are criticizing um, that NIO is investing in R&D and expansions and also investing in um, other um, revenue lines uh, besides, of, uh, besides of manufacturing cars uh, or selling cars, I should say. For example, NIO phone, NIO um, smartwatch line, the NIO life, um, NIO battery swapping, all these things um, have been actually part of the Bailey Gifford thesis from the very beginning. So this is dating, I think, more than five years ago. And yeah, the spiciness in here is, of course, um, that um, it, it could be worth many times over uh, the next few years. They're seeing that Chinese car sales per annum are likely to rise to 35 million, helped by central government aiming for 50% of new car sales to be EVs by 2030. We are well on track to that. Um, they had a 2025 goal for 25% uh, that was already um, yeah, taken this year, um, even exceeded by that. And... They are saying that if NIO takes 20% of that market, this equates to uh, 3.5 million vehicles a year, likely to be a combination of premium and sub-brand vehicles. So even back then already um, thought through the, um, uh, the different aspects of having both the NIO brand that is premium and the sub-market, um, the sub brands that is um, down market positioned and margins to rise to 25%. That's also what we usually get um, reiterated on the earnings call. Driven by the success in new life brands means market cap multiples of what it is today. To be exact, in their original 2015 prospectus, Bailey Gifford outlined that 1 million premium vehicles a year um, and licensing IP to further 1 million uh, and an affluent community of f uh, 5 to 10 million um, embracing the Neo brand as well as Neo Life um, offerings such as clothing, clubhouses, entertainment as, and so on, as well as margins that are two times the traditional premium vehicles around 20%. Um, could give a tax flow or, or post-tax cash flow of around 100 billion RMB and a valuation of 300 billion US dollars, so a 40 times upside. However, keep in mind that this is a very theoretical potential. This is a very long shot here and we haven't got an update by Bailey Gifford on these um, aspects. This is from the very original 2015 um, of this prospectus. So um, it would be interesting to see how Bailey Gifford thinks around this today. Though given the fact that they have now decided to purchase an additional 24 million of NEO shares, one should assume that they seem to see their um, valuation as well as um, investment thesis and growth thesis in play still. Um, also, um, keep in mind that they have frequent management calls. They have an office on the ground, so they know what's happening in China. These are not investors, um, you know, just observing from overseas, like let's say Ark Invest, who has no uh, China analyst, for example. And so therefore, um, we should um, consider this message of this big purchase here as a vote of confidence and also, um, let's say, stubbornness here in their investment thesis that, of course, doesn't mean that this will play out in the long run. Um, I always mentioned like in my books, NEO is around a 40 US dollar stock. Um, when um, the uh, Hofei agreement will be fulfilled, um, of course, we grew faster than this um, in 2020 during all of the frenzy. But um, ultimately, I think long, long term, if they um, 
achieve those goals mentioned in the Hofe agreement, and I'll make another video about that. Um, that's just uh, the valuation that I would give to the stock here. Um, but in the long run, I also do see the potential as outlined by Bailey Gifford around many more aspects to NEO, for example, NEO Life, but also as I keep on pointing out here on the channel around the potential of building an energy grid system with battery swap stations that are helping to balance the grid and monetizing that one as well. We are far from that now. This is all pretty much um, almost like startup investing or venture capital investing, early growth stages. Um, still haven't entered the S curve of growth for uh, actual even vehicle deliveries, right? And NEO is still at a point where they have to invest. And this will, um, yeah, unfortunately, be not so good for the balance sheet in the short term because it will uh, draw down some of the resources. But luckily, uh, so far, NEO is well capitalized and hopefully doesn't have to tap the markets anymore. Uh, currently, I don't see that happening um, for additional funds. And therefore, it seems like this valuation and um, uh, growth prospects are still into play, at least according to Bailey Gifford. What do you personally think about it? Um, how do you see this vote of confidence? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Please um, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button and um, share it possibly in some of your favorite investment channels and consider to become a patron and join my community. Thanks again and see you in the next one.